Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name's Mike. I'm a journeyman beekeeper in North Carolina. And I made this video on May the 4th of 2021. And we're gonna go through two different hives, an eight frame hive and a 10 frame hive. And I'm just gonna show you and talk to you about kind of the things I do and my thought process. If you learn something, let me know in the comments. I really just wanna read a bunch of comments and be able to respond to them and interact with you. And then if you see something that you don't like, also let me know that. All right, thanks. So our first hive is going to be the coffee hive here and we've been having some problems with the broodminder on the inside so we're going to take it apart and check all the frames like a beginner would and we'll also check the broodminder and see what's going on. All right, let's get into it. Before I start, I do want to point out the stuff that I have so if you are a beginner, you can uh, start off on the right foot. Don't just walk out and start inspecting. What I have here is just a bucket and it's got one of these uh, tool holders on it. So I put Therapic in, if I get stung, I can heat up the spot and kind of neutralize the venom a little bit so it doesn't do a whole lot of itching and swelling. We have some uh, EpiPens just in case somebody comes out and wants to talk to me while we're doing it and they get stung and have a reaction. More importantly, on the inside here, I got some extra orange gloves and I have a propolis jar and a wax jar. It's always helpful if you open the hive and you got a bunch of uh, extra comb, you know where to put it. Don't just throw it out or throw it back into the hive. It's not like they're gonna pick it up and reuse it. I got a knife in here, pen, and you, you may see uh, these little guys as I walk around the bucket. Those are paint pens for marking queens. Uh, I don't really mark queens anymore, but I keep it just in case I go to somebody else's place and needs to mark it. Extra hive tool because you never know when you're going to lose your hive tool. It's always good to have an extra lighter, smoker, and then this box over here, it's called a nucleus box, but I've modified it. It has a couple of vents on it, and on the front, that little red thing is a uh, bee escape. So it's backwards though, so the bees can go in, but they can't come out. In here is just a regular nuke box. I got a migratory top if you're looking for the name of this or wanna buy one or make one, it's pretty easy. And then I'm just gonna put the frames in that I take out. So if I'm doing an inspection, I wanna make some room and then I'll take one frame out, I'll put it in this box. I'll put the cover back on so that the bees are less disturbed. The whole point of this is not disturbing the bees too much and then keeping them kinda of happy which keeps them healthier. Let's talk about goals. My goal for this hive is just really to find out what's going on with the broodminder and to show really how beginner beekeepers kind of really get excited and want to go through all the frames. What I just did with my tool is I took it on the side here and I just cracked and that kind of takes the propolis if they've glued the top on, takes that out of the picture so it's easy to lift. I just pick up the, uh, the top, I'll place it on the ground upside down. That way when I take boxes off, I can put it perpendicular on that top. That way we're not crushing a ton of bees. Uh, I'm gonna actually take the inner cover and I'm just gonna lean it up against the front. And that plant's kind of helping me. So I lean it up against the front so if they wanna walk back in the hive, they can. They don't have to worry about lifting and flying and going someplace else. Now for this top box, because it's a super, all I'm gonna do is look in between. So this one's pulled out, this one's towards the middle. It's not pulled out all the way yet. I only put this super on about three days ago. So now there there is something, if you do your research, uh, it's like six pounds of honey for a pound of wax. Um, 
in this case I'm trying to get them to pull out all of my stuff so next year um, trying to get them to pull out everything so next year we just plop them in and they just fill it with nectar and we double our crop it, with beekeeping you'll notice everything's about doubling and tripling um, I'm not even gonna go through the rest I'll just push it back together and that's because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, the box is kind of big. I like that. I like the boxes with the extra room on the sides. Like, yeah, the bees will pull out wax a little bit more, but they uh, just on the outsides. But it helps with like moving the frames around a little bit. Really get it in there, and then I pull up on my hive tool to separate the box like that instead of down, because when you look at the hive, if you pull up your tool is pressing on the tops of the the next frames but when you push down it really has nothing to push against so I, it's not a big deal as far as physics go or anything like that because this box is going to separate regardless and then you'll see we got more burr comb and we got nectar being filled in here and all I'm going to do, and the burr comb is actually on the box below. That's why we're getting it here. So this is going to be, this is going to be a good example. But here, whoo, take my tool. I'm going to clear the bees from that corner. I'll try and turn it so you can see. And then I'm just going to hold it real, real nice and tight. And even though there's bees right there, I'm just going to do this. And then I'll put it right there for a second. And I'll do that. Now there's two things that could happen. The bees will either really get on that wax or they'll they'll jump off because it moved. Oops, I'm cool. All I want to do is just put this right back. Done and done. Take this, open that up, put the cap upside down on it so bees don't try and get in. Give it a little movement. Done. I do have eight frames. These boxes are great. Now what I will do is I look down to make sure that these frames are lined up with the frames on the bottom. Because if they're a little bit off, then like that burr comb we were just looking at, that will happen. It doesn't happen often. But if there's a good flow like there is now, it will happen. And look, we're through two boxes. Pretty nice and easy. See how much... For See how much uh, honey is in there. All right. Got my wax over there. Just gonna do this real quick. Try and get some of that stuff off. Put it right there. Now the bees do have an alarm pheromone. They'll tell the other bees, hey, I'm trapped, I'm having trouble. It will kind of irk them. You see how they're kind of flying around a little bit. But that's okay. Promise, I promise you, it's okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, as long as you remember you're top of the food chain, but that's kind of a joke. More than more than anything. Because you gotta respect the bees too. So that should help us for now. Wrap right down here, put it right on top of this box. Now at this point, I'm going to take this inner cover, because those are the supers, and I'll put it right on top. And friendly tip, because I saw this on Facebook, is people keep putting the deep side down. Don't do that because they'll build bird comb. Put the shallow side, you'll see that there's one side that's deep one that's shallow put the shallow side down and when you have those inner covers with the notches the notch actually goes up uh, in some cases you can turn it around and put the notch the other way but uh, I, I would just suggest if you're a beginner put that notch up all right so on top of the frames not too worried about a queen being there so 
if the queen is on top while I'm scraping like this, that's just bad luck. Just bad luck. They're stuck in there. You can actually remove them without worrying about being stung. So, and I, I say that with the, the means of as long as you're not putting pressure on that bee, you're just grabbing her real quick on the sides and, and throwing her off. She'll be happy. Get out of there. Oh well. She'll figure it out. All right. So we haven't been in this hive in quite a while. So doing kind of the beginner steps is, is good. Now first thing I want to do, because they have attached it to the side a little bit, I'm just going to take my tool. I'm going to do like, almost like cut in motion. Take that. Give me that. What are you guys doing? And once we get towards the end, I'll tell you why doing an inspection like this is not always good. Because you'll start to see, as we get past the 20 minute mark or even further, they're not happy. When you're disturbing the bees, take some burlap. <laughs> Put the burlap on there. Now how many bees can you see? Just this frame. So, pull out a frame. It is all nectar. Whew, look at that. <laughs> Oh, that's even capped on that side. This side is not capped. And if this is an end piece, that means you're going to have a lot of capped nectar in here. Which is kind of good for me. Because there's a good chance I might take a few frames today. Look at that. But if I do take frames, that means my supers aren't going to be filled. Let me show you this. So, yes, we see a whole frame of brood but it's all being backfilled as well so all of those empty spots have nectar in them so that tells me that they're starting to make a honey boundary which means everything's being pushed into the bottom box everything that's in the top is going to emerge and become their honey stores all right next so this is not a great like situation being where you have bees crawling all over you they're they feel like they're they're angry they're being defensive right now because I'm taking apart everything if your bees are doing this put it back together close it up give them some smoke wait a little bit and then take it back take it back apart put it like this um, all right lots of drones here my tool back there we go I got some capped workers I got a lot of polished cells and some that have oh there we go now the sun's out drone let's flip it so this is a book method turn to the side like this like this like this bee bread is a mix of nectar and mm -hmm. pollen which we call bee bread and that's what feeds the uh, the young larva. Now, bee bread is super shiny on top. So you go, oh, that's pollen. And then you look harder and you mm -hmm. go, no, that's bee bread because it's super shiny. <laughs> so I, I should have remembered, I wrote broodminder woo -hoo, on top. Now take a look at that. Take a look at that. Woo, buddy. So this is the middle frame. Every cell that doesn't have bee bread or nectar has an egg in it. So I'm just going to put this back together. I know there's a queen in there because I saw eggs. I had a queen that definitely laid. Now the eggs will stand straight up so that when, if you're looking at me and I'm in the cell, the egg will stand straight up like this on day one and it starts to kind of lay and then when it hatches, it turns into a larva and it makes this C shape in the cell. So 
once you start seeing those C shapes, that tells you four, five, six days was when your queen was last at that cell. So you can kind of track where she is. If you look at each frame, if you get crazy like that or spend all this time like I'm doing in the hive, you could do that. I don't know why I took my hive tool off. Let me see if I can answer more questions for you. So why did I know that eggs were going to be in the bottom box? That's because the way Langstroth is made and the way we manage the bees is that we just make them angry. No, um, is that we're trying to keep the brood and the queen down in the bottom two boxes and then the honey on top. So bees like to have their stores or resources on top and that's what we do here. Now when you're in a, a war a, it's a little bit different and we can talk about that in a different video but honey, honey, maybe half honey and brood and then brood. Here I could probably just throw supers on it and be fine but I like having the extra brood box just in case. Um, and when I say just throw supers onto this, I'd use a queen excluder to make that superficial boundary for them instead of letting them do it on their own. All right, girls. So it's funny because you get different sized boxes sometimes when you, uh, when you build them yourself or you buy them from somebody else and they don't quite fit the right width because some are real snug with the frames and others give you some room. I like the ones with a little bit of room. But these are not that way. So there's going to be a little bit of a lip on one side. I try and center it a little bit. But there you go. So, so some fun things to remember is if you're going to go through your beehive, if it's during the flow, I didn't get stung at all. I went nice and smooth. You saw some jerkiness. I even killed some bees and you saw them all over me. Just stay calm. Yeah, these gloves are the orange mechanics gloves. You see the link in the description, really nice. And uh, I couldn't find out what was wrong with the broodminder because I didn't expect the bees to, to quite do that, which I should have. But uh, it tells me that there's no like liquid or anything in there because there was uh, there's propolis all around it and wax all around it. And I do have a laying queen, so I really have nothing to worry about here except for cleaning off some of the frames to make sure that they keep drawing straight and I don't have a mess when I go to harvest. Did I have to go through every frame to see that? No. Typically I take off the top three boxes, put them on the cover off to the side, put the uh, inner cover back on, and then just look through the bottom box. One box and you're done. Let's go on to part two. Starwood is a 10 frame hive. It's the only 10 frame hive that we have. And we, we got it uh, from a friend of ours. And it's just something that we want to see if there's any differences between Langstroth uh, 8s and Langstroth 10s. And there's a little bit, but not that much. All right, so the inner cover, I just lay on the front of the hive there. Whoops. That was a fail. There we go. Lay on the front of the hive. And then I'm going to I'll go ahead and I'll move the camera so that it's kind of like a point of view where you can see what I'm doing. So I can look down in between the frames here. And I got nothing going on here. And then we're pulled out. Maybe there's nothing here, but and nothing there. So we'll do some rearranging. And the first thing I know about the 10 frame is that the boxes fit, or the uh, frames fit pretty tight in the boxes. My eight frames are not like that. So boom, we see a whole lot of nothing really going on. And I'm going to put that in my quiet box. I just put the lid on, call it good. That actually, the lid went on a little bit harder than I like, but it's on. Okay, this frame has nothing on my side, as we can see there. On this side, we have lots of nectar 
being filled in. So that's a good sign. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to flip it around so that the side that's not pulled out with wax is over there. We'll look through the next one. And then if this one has a bunch of just nectar in it, we'll pull out a middle. And it does. See all that nectar? And this one has a little bit of pollen going in there. So we'll keep an eye on that. So that means let's skip to here. Okay. We'll move these down. And we'll look in here. And we'll see if we got any brood or anything going on. So that's all nectar again. And that is not supposed to be like that. So what I just do is I'll take this and I'll just kind of push it down into that little gap. Oh, B, no. Anyway, push it down to that little gap and they will fix that. That's all nectar. There we go. Okay, so that kind of tells me there's a honey boundary here. There, uh, the middle had just honey. It had little scotias of bee bread in there. Scotias, is that a word? Um, I'll push this this way. All right, I'll get my other box or uh, frame. Okay, the one that was basically empty. Put. Put it in there like this. I'm gonna just even, if I can, there we are, just even all this out a little bit. Okay, and that box is done. So I'm gonna set that box on the hive top over here, and then I'm gonna cover it with the inner cover. And I put it on perpendicular so that there's less chance of squishing bees. I'm going to kindly put that on. And boom, here we are. So we're in the brood box now, brood chamber. They've completely waxed this side to the wall, so I'll have to fix that. And that's because of this this beetle blaster. My bad. Sorry, guys. So I'll probably go without a beetle blaster. I didn't see any. And this one looks uber dirty. So that's what we're looking like. It's just gross. This is this is trash. So now that the beetle blaster is out, I'm going to go ahead and just... I think I'm just going to try and do that just a little bit, see what I can break. And then what I'm going to do is run my tool down all the way, as much as I can, at least. We'll see what we have here. Now, I always just move the, the frame over to this ledge so I can put my hive tool back on the magnet. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. <laughs> okay, I see what you did here. Classic. Anyway, so this is what I got. It's a bunch of nectar and honey. Let's see what else. I got a. I got lots of eggs in the drone cells. Like uh, one per, but there's a whole section. Then on the other side, I got to show you this because bees will do this. 
See that extra little bit? I'm going to take that off. We'll turn it into art or something. But here, I'll try and put it where you can see. So what I'm going to do here is I just lean it up against, take my hive tool, gently cut that, cut this, and basically I'm just going to pull on it. We'll see if we we have any more problems, or maybe I'll cut, because that appears to be attached right there. Boom. So I'm going to take this off. We'll turn it into some sort of art and sell it. It's going to have bee entrails on it. So I'll put that over there. And now what I'm going to do with this is push this portion. Oh wait, well, maybe maybe I won't even push it. I was I typically pull it or push it back a little bit so that it kind of makes up for that room. It doesn't seem to really need it. It's all about comb maintenance at that point. So I'm going to put this in the silent box. Holler out in the comments if you see the queen. Just give me what time. Because uh, I'm not exactly looking for her. I just saw eggs. I'm kind of happy with that. I'm going to go with the middle right now and see what I can get out of that. Oh, that's not moving, but that one is. All right. Excuse me. Okay. I'll do this one. Oh, they're just like... I must, I must be killing a couple of bees here, because this is, yeah, and I just did again. Shoot. I was going to say, this is not super normal. But yeah, I just keep hitting them. Shoot. There's another one. No. Anyway, I'm not super worried about it. There's plenty of bees in this hive. It's just weird that it keeps happening. Because I'm normally very good about not doing that. Today's been an interesting day. Alright, let's pull this out. Whoops. I don't know if you saw while it was coming out, but this is the brood pattern that we got. It's pretty good. Wall to wall. Ooh, ooh. And it's hot out today, so I gotta be careful doing that because these are foundationless. When you hold it like that, they will bend and flex on you. So I'm just gonna put that back in. She seems to be laying healthy. Okay. And a couple puffs of smoke would, would solve this uh, bees being in my face problem, but it's not really a problem. I got a veil on. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Do I want to do anything else? I think I'm good. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other frame back in. It's funny because they all jumped off. sink in if that bee will allow it because I just killed another yep and they're gonna get rowdy rowdy piper in here boom all right so now that I've squished a billion bees at least what it feels like I'm gonna throw this hog half comb back on And what I'm going to do is just shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. And hopefully most got out. 
I've already killed a bunch today. Might as well just keep going. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, heavy. We'll put this up top. 